case of People v. Jack William Brandt, Jr. That's you, sir? Uh, the second. Okay. The second. Uh, we've met before over the years. You are here in this case with your lawyer, Mr. Ross Truckee. We have with us to help us today two ASL interpreters. And I'm going to identify each of them and swear them in before we begin. Mr. Brandt, you got arrested on August 17th. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. They charge you with two counts of resisting and obstructing a police officer. That is a felony punishable by up to two years imprisonment and a fine of up to $2,000. They also charge you with operating while intoxicated as a second offense. That is a misdemeanor. It is punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Carry six points on your driving record. And it requires that your driver's license be suspended. Your lawyer and Mr. Marvin discussed this matter some weeks ago. Mr. Marvin is the county prosecuting attorney. He agreed to dismiss the felony resisting and obstructing charges for a plea to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer, which is a misdemeanor, punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000 and also to plead to operating while intoxicated as a second offense. Mr. Truckee, is that your understanding of the plea agreement? Yes, it is, Your Honor. I set this matter today for what's called screening and sentencing. The law requires that we have at least two interpreters for a court proceeding. And it's sometimes difficult to line that all up. So we have arranged for both of these professionals to help us here today. You have met with Mr. Matt Hoff from the probation department with the assistance of an interpreter. And he is going to make a recommendation regarding your sentence. But before we get to the sentence, you have to first enter a plea. Are you going to plead guilty to the misdemeanor offense of attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And operating while intoxicated as a second offense. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Were you driving a car here in St. Joe County on Thursday, August 17th? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I was, Your Honor. And did you get into a traffic accident? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Do you remember where you were going? I was going to say, I was going to say, yes, Your Honor. Where in Sturgis? Uh, either Myers or Walmart, Your Honor. Either Meyer or Walmart. To Your return Honor. the pop bottles. To return pop bottles. Where were you coming from? Uh, my parents' house, Your Honor. My parents' house, Your Honor. Had you been drinking? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. What were you drinking? 
Actually, your honor, a pint. A pint. But I did not finish it, your honor. But I didn't finish it, your honor. It was either three fourths way or a half way, your honor. It was either three fourths way done or a half. And Mr. Truckee, you confirm his blood alcohol was 0.260. Uh, I believe it was 0.267 on the PBT, 0.277 on the blood. All right. The report says 260 PBT. What was the blood? 277. That's very high, Mr. Brandt. And I was very surprised by that. Then they arrested you. Is that true? Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. And they took you to the hospital. Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. And you were very agitated. Yes, your honor. People started trying to separate the form, form of communication. Yes, your honor. I, I there was no communication. There was no way to communicate. Why didn't we communicate? We we were not able to communicate. Jack, that is the frustration of your whole life. Yes, that's why um, I am a push trauma stress disorder. That's why I have a uh -huh. trauma stress disorder. I have met you a number it's of times over the years. Uh, it's frustrating. Yes, it is frustrating. And I, I have no. seen it. You are intelligent. You are always polite and respectful when I talk to you. But your life is full of frustration for trying to communicate with people. Yes, yeah, your honor. Yes, yes. Your honor. So you got very upset and thrashed around in the back of the car, kicked your legs, and... Well, well hold on. I was not in the back seat. I was sitting in the front seat. Oh, the front I was seat. not in the back seat. I was sitting in the front seat. But I didn't ask to be sat in the back seat. But I did ask but to be sat in the back seat. seat too. But they refused. And that was upsetting to you. What? Wow. Yeah, it did upset me, but it made no sense to me. Yeah, it did upset me, and it made no sense to me, Your Honor. And did you try to kick the officer? Uh, to be in pain, Your Honor, I have a hard thank you memory of what happened until my lawyer sent me the police report through email and I read it. But um, I do remember the hospital part where the op officer was uh, shocking me with a thumb. Did you try to spit on him? Uh, I have a, like I said, I have. Uh, I just don't remember the spinning part until I read the police report. Will you accept that? I have to hold myself accountable for my action. All right. The question now becomes, what do we do? Uh, I will accept your plea to operating while intoxicated. There is a previous offense, and I will accept the plea with your acceptance to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer. 
So I'm going to ask Mr. Huff, our probation officer, who met with you, to ask what he recommends that I do. Mr. Huff. Well, Your Honor, this is a very difficult case. As you know, there's a lot going on. Um, Mr. Brandt does reside in Colon with his parents. Uh, he does not have a traditional job, so to speak, and he doesn't work um, on any consistent basis. But he does help his father, who is a plumber, <coughs> um, and some he cleans houses for some friends. Uh, he's not married. He doesn't have any children. Um, the day of the offense, I, I, I asked Mr. Um, Brandt about what happened the day of the offense, because this took place at 11 in the morning. Um, it's just one of those factors that is very alarming to be a 0.277 um, blood alcohol at 11 o'clock in the morning is obviously concerning. Um, I was pleasantly surprised when meeting with Mr. Brandt about his outlook on um, his relationship with alcohol. If you look at his criminal history since he's turned about 18 years old, uh, we have a couple of um, MIP minor in possessions, um, a disturbing the peace, and uh, another drunk driving in 2016. And I talked to Mr. Brandt about this. And he admits that alcohol has been his bane, so to speak, uh, his downfall. He, in his words, said, it's time for me to close this chapter. Um, and, and he realizes, I think, this is not easy work. I I borrowed one of your lines and I said, um, you know, it's not easy to accept that you can't have another drink at 30 or 31 years old. Um, some people have are faced with that decision earlier, uh, but when you're as young as Mr. Brandt, to come to the realization that you just can't drink anymore or else this is what happens um, is a difficult thing to encounter. His, um, his the fact that he is is um, holding himself accountable for all that took place in this. Um, while it doesn't score any brownie points, so to speak, it does, I think, um, inevitably point me in the direction of my recommendation. Um, <clears throat> I guess just to, to be clear about what happened on, on the 17th, he, he stated that uh, he had about a half of a pint or so, maybe a little bit more of whiskey first thing in the morning at eight or nine o'clock. Um, and then he had that pint in the vehicle with him when he was traveling uh, down 86 to go to Sturgis to return some pop bottles or some beer bottles, uh, more accurately. <clears throat> he did smoke marijuana the night before. He regularly uses marijuana. He stays for medical purposes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, states that he struggles with tinnitus, <clears throat> post-traumatic stress, anxiety. <clears throat> amongst a few other conditions that are related to his health. Um, <clears throat> he stated he knew that he was intoxicated when he drove. Um, he admitted that he knew it was a bad decision. Uh, however, the alcohol had obviously crept into his ability to um, make a sound decision. In regards to the resisting, I feel like Mr. Brandt has spoke to that. Um, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. Obviously problematic behavior when um, when he acts the way that he, he was acting, I understand there are some difficulties that he has to face that others don't. And so I, I did consider that in there. However, he does, um, have some history with potentially acting inappropriately, um, based off of his frustrations. And then obviously the fact that he was as intoxicated as he was. He was, I believe, relatively honest in regards to his alcohol use around the time of his offense. He stated he was drinking by himself at least two to three times per week. And then he may consume um, with friends as well on the weekends. 
And when he drinks by himself, he said he does drink whiskey. When he drinks with friends, he has between six to 12 beers or beverages. Um, he has a family history of substance abuse. Um, and he's <clears throat> experienced quite a few symptoms of substance abuse, which I believe is very obvious he's struggling with here. He has been attending AA regularly. Um, he's found an online deaf AA <clears throat> group that he's enjoying. Um, he has a, an evaluation scheduled with Pivotal in Centerville on October 23rd for perhaps a mental health and substance abuse evaluation, which I believe he needs. And he's not undergone any counseling as of yet, but um, that ball is rolling. I think given his criminal history, it's appropriate that there be a jail component to this. Um, at some point in time, there has to be a consequence beyond simply um, inconvenience of a probation or missing an appointment or whatever it may be. Um, I'm recommending a two year probation that is intense in nature. Um, his license will be revoked <clears throat> as he's had two drunk drivings within seven years of, of one another. Um, he stated he has the ability with family um, or with the transportation uh, authority in St. Joseph County to make it to all requirements of probation. Um, his mother works part time. So she has indicated to me that she would be able to transport him to and from drug and alcohol testing on her days off. Um, I, essentially, I would recommend that we set a probation up similar to a sobriety court probation. <clears throat> because in order for him to get his license back in the future, he's going to have to do that regardless of whether or not he's on probation or not. Um, there was a recommendation for continued AA through his deaf community, um, $150 restitution to the Michigan State Police, um, and then obviously that he comply with substance abuse and mental health counseling, and that he be sentenced to 10 days jail, credit three, leaving seven days to serve. And I believe that's all I had, Your Honor. <clears throat> What's your thought about allowing marijuana use as to, while he's on probation? I believe that he likely has a legitimate medical um, reason. That being said, I think that it can be problematic with substance abuse. He could likely turn to simply using marijuana regularly, maybe even more often instead of alcohol. Um, but I would leave that up to a, a medical professional to make that call. Mr. Truckee, what would you like me to know? <clears throat> I mean, Your Honor is very familiar with this case. I think in some of the things the court has already said makes obviates a bit of my argument, but uh, Jack Grant might be the loneliest person in St. Joseph County. Um, he was deaf from infancy or from birth. Um, he attended schools in a different area where in Portage where he could receive deaf services. And that was great at the time, but that <coughs> resulted in him coming back to here with no one deaf to communicate with. And as your honor can tell with the interpreters, he's a quite eloquent and intelligent young man, but I cannot fathom the loneliness a person must experience when the only, it's like being in a foreign country, but worse, I suppose. Um, the, you know, you can only reach this surface level, superficial communication and connection with others. And I think that Based on his criminal history, it's quite clear what he uses to fill that void, what he has been using to fill that void. <clears throat> uh, I suppose Jack Daniels speaks ASL, but we're stuck here with a situation where there's not 
adequate services at this time for a deaf person in our community to to truly benefit from services. It was only upon this case um, arising that that AA was found online for deaf folks. That's been a great benefit to Jack, seeing other people with the same struggles. Um, you know, all of those folks have their individual issues as well, but they all have something in common with Jack, the isolation. And I believe that a probation sentence is absolutely fair. I don't doubt that he will and his family will support him in completing his requirements. I do think that a jail sentence would be psychologically harmful. Um, the folks in the jail, the isolation, even if it is a seven day sentence, the isolation that's gonna take place there is gonna unwind some amount of progress. I, I would understand if your honor wants to keep a hammer over his head, so to speak, with a, a suspended sentence that should be instituted upon failure of any of the conditions. But I trust that he has the support now. He's finally connecting with some of the services in the deaf community. Um, he's actually asked the interpreters if they know any deaf resources. I, I think that he's kind of ready to break out of the isolation and connect with his people and, and get the help he needs. Um, just the idea that the only sound a person hears is the humming of a tinnitus issue is it's just very troublesome to me to think of Mr. Brandt being in the county jail. So I would just ask the court to institute the probation, uh, stipulate to the reimbursement and any of the conditions that are designed forward thinking to get him better. That's, that's what I would ask for your honor. Mr. Brandt, is there anything you'd like to tell me? <clears throat> Excuse me, Your Honor. Now, also, I have tonight is serious. I have um, sensory awareness. It's sometimes get too much for me, like right now. So, uh, I also have, I have tinnitus, but also sensory awareness issues. So yes. Everything just gets to be too much, even like right now. Oh, I apologize. I apologize for my mistakes, Your Honor. Your Honor, I want to apologize for my mistakes. All right, thank you. Mr. Truckee did a pretty good job of trying to explain. your circumstance and i'm aware of it i have seen it and as a hearing person we can't fully understand the frustration that someone like you has there was a movie uh two or three years ago called the sound of metal about deafness and hearing loss. The actor was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. I think he won. And the whole purpose of that movie was to share with us hearing people. You see that text message? The frustration of living as a deaf person in a hearing world. Dr. Diada will be with you in just a moment. Um, yes. But you hit another car. You could have killed someone else or yourself and your conduct with the police officers and the hospital staff was outrageous. They're just trying to do their job. 
and you were so very intoxicated so very early in the morning. I certainly agree with Mr. Huff that you need to be on probation for 24 months. It could be discharged sooner if you do a good job on the probation. And this probation isn't to try to make your life miserable. It's try to help you deal with this alcohol issue. I'm going to follow Matt's recommendation. I'm going to order 10 days jail credit three, leaving seven days to serve for almost killing someone. The fine is $300. There's a $75 crime victims rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, a $100 screening fee, $150 attorney fee, $960 probation oversight fee, and a $150 police reimbursement. It's 1785 You posted a $5,000 cash bond. Your Honor, if I may, I believe his mother posted the $5,000 cash bond. All right. We can return that to his mother. At least let's return everything over and above it. Uh, <coughs> When do you wish to do the jail time? I, on that note. Um, no, I was asking Ross, do you want to schedule it? You're asking me? I, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matt. I would leave that up to, to the court. I, I do have a note on that, Your Honor. There's a long scheduled vacation with Jack and his father uh, beginning tomorrow. All right. I will have the probation department schedule the jail time. Regarding the resisting and obstructing charge, I'm ordering three days credit, three days concurrent with the drinking driving charge. No drugs and no alcohol. Till further ruling, you may use marijuana as a legal adult. I want you to continue with your AA, continue with Pivotal for your substance abuse counseling and treatment, sign a release. Ross, did I, I mean, Matt, did I leave anything out? I don't believe so, Your Honor. All right. Uh, I would like to thank both of our interpreters for being here. I would like this to work. And for you to get on top of your alcohol problems. And maybe even make some new friends and broaden your horizons. <clears throat> but I'm glad that I did not read your name in the newspaper as someone that was killed in an accident. You go with Mr. Huff and they'll work on the terms and conditions of this probation.